regulated you see what's going on you're actually pleasure to have on the boat great worker good fisherman great guy but with the regulations we got going on in this industry we're just having a tough time making making hay and unfortunately you're the low man on the totem pole and I'm gonna have to let you go because I can't afford you anymore <laughs> Tim and Aaron want to get dinner on Friday. I told them I'd find someplace cute in the neighborhood. I don't know any place cute in the neighborhood. I don't know the neighborhood. There's gotta be someone we can call, right? Maybe we could have it here. Do you think we could have the place ready by then? You could make something. I could get a couple of bottles of wine. Sure. Maybe you could shave. Oh, don't give me that. You wouldn't believe the day that I've had. I swear, it's like... 
It's as if every other woman that walks into my office is another one of these proud hooker types. This girl that I interviewed today, her name was... I can't remember. Janessa, Jen, something forgettable like that. She spent the entire interview talking about how proud she was to be a whore, how it was her chosen profession, and in the same breath she tells me she has three kids, she's on welfare, she can't get a real job because the government will take away her money, and she tells me this is what she chooses to do. Obviously, it's not her choice. I try to tell her what it is exactly that I'm trying to do, what the decriminalization of prostitution really means for her, that it means health insurance, protection from rape and violence, all of this, and she says, she doesn't want the government involved. She thinks it would be more rules and regulations. <laughs> I would prefer the rules and regulations of the government than a pimp any day. It's this weird mentality that they develop, especially the girls that are in the houses. It's some group mentality that they think they are making some grand feminist gesture by reclaiming their sexuality, but they're miserable and I know it. They're commodities in an industry run entirely by men, cogs in a patriarchal mechanism, and they refuse to, to acknowledge it. And this little shit, Stephanie, this intern that I've got transcribing for me, she's in her sophomore year at Columbia, some real bleeding heart liberal, tells me I should open up to them more, maybe they would trust me. <laughs> you would think, telling them how I'm trying to help them, that the lobbying that I'm doing on their behalf, the initiatives that I'm trying to push, that that would be enough reason for them to open up to me. God, it's hot in here. Weren't you gonna fix the air conditioning? Isn't that on the list of something to do somewhere? Yeah. Oh, and, and the cable guy is coming on Wednesday, sometime between 12 and four. One of us has to be here, I can't. I've got interviews all day, can you do it? Yeah. In the cab, on the way home today. Some idiot. You got heat, are you Oh, no, I'm done. Thank you. Some idiot throws himself off of a building on 23rd Street. I was stuck in gridlock for 30, 40 minutes. It took me an hour and a half to get home. God, if you're gonna kill yourself, jump off of a bridge. Don't make the rest of us suffer because you're so miserable. I swear. Hallelujah! Do pray and God bless.
sings and there was a great revolution, a great revival, and the pueblo empezaba a abrir escuelas. Clínicas donde no había clínicas, enviando ayuda aquí para allá. Aleluya. Es cuando hay un pueblo dado a Dios, suceden cosas. Wow. Oh. You okay? Yeah. I'm fine. It's just that the laundromat is uh, supposed to be open and it's not, so... <laughs> There's a 24-hour one up there. Oh, there is? To teach a seminar on how to knit baby animals, because that's what I do. And they were going to pay me, which was going to be awesome. I was going to make it this fat check, and I was relying on it to get me back from Tivoli. So at any rate, I get there, and no one's there. I've got the wrong fucking day, which is so my style, and I'm stranded. So, thank you so much. You're very welcome. You good? I'm good. I'm good. totally good. I'm totally good. Good luck with your laundry. Thank you so... You know what? I should give you my number. You know, I mean, just, you know, like, in case, or whatever, or, you know, um... Um, you know, what... <laughs> could... Call me. <laughs>
There you go. 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 Come on. There you go. Come on. Oh shit. Look at that. <laughs> Looks like you didn't make it too far down the road. No, I didn't, man. Are these yours? Uh, a few of them are. A few of them belong to another guy. This one is, though. Beautiful. You ride them? Uh, we're breaking them right now. Not quite ready to ride yet. <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're, <laughs> they're rough. But hopefully within the year, we'll have them. Nothing special, just trails. Is this all your place? Uh, I, I run it with a friend of mine. We're storing it. It's a, it's a real old, old place. But we've been working on it here for a few seasons and it's, it's starting to come up to code and shape. Do you need hands? I showed you that wood pile earlier over on the side of the barn. And I need as many three quarter inch planks as you can find over there. Um, the, the hardwood, not plywood. Um, the condition of the wood doesn't really matter, but I need it all for flooring that we're going to be doing here. So take this tape measure and, uh, bring it all up here. That'd be great. I'm sorry, how many you want? As many as you can find, all three quarter inch.
you go, man. Okay, great. Um, so this looks good. Anything like this though, any of these shorter little pieces, I can't really use that. So let's say anything under like a foot and a half. Okay. Uh, Can you use this piece? No, this guy, I need them all to be kind of a uniform width. Um, anything like this, this is good, you know. So a foot and a half or bigger and then solid. Yep. Anything else, man? No, you just keep them coming. Sebastian! 